down the road, 100 years, people look back and they go... 100 years? Pharma's who's he? I mean, that, <laughs> let's face it. 100 years is a long time. Harold is unflappable. He's a brilliant scientist. Oh, Harold's super bright. And uh, you have a lot of super bright people who've done nothing, but Harold did something very important. Harold, working with Mike Bishop, uh, made that most profound observation uh, that there are genes within all of our cells uh, which, if mutated, are capable of causing cancer, oncogenes. So, you know, it was a discovery when you hear about it, you, you think, well, you know, he's going to get a Nobel Prize. He did. When Harold Varmus first came to NIH, uh, he wrote a paper about how we would need uh, to address the fact uh, that the budgets for biomedical research were going to be cut because that was everybody's expectation. Uh, quite the opposite occurred, uh, and I think Harold had a lot to do with that in terms of the way in which he put forward the promise of medical research in a fashion that was highly credible, highly authoritative, and inspiring. Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, Cancer Center has a long tradition of outstanding cancer care as well as uh, basic cancer research. During the 10 years he was here, he attracted a number of uh, of leading uh, investigators to move to New York and set up new programs um, in immunology, uh, cancer biology, and a program that I direct called Human Oncology. Uh, so he's transformed the face of this institution. Right now, cancer research is red hot. There is so much potential for really figuring out in a comprehensive way what causes a normal cell to become malignant. But to steer that part of the ship, I needed somebody with exquisite scientific knowledge and instinct and judgment. And there's nobody on the planet that I think could measure up to Harold in terms of those characteristics. The thing I see most clearly when I look at the, the problem we face in cancer is understanding exactly what goes wrong with a cancer cell, how we might prevent those things from happening, how we can counter them with new therapies and, and uh, make the uh, cancer a more controllable disease. The qualities required to uh, lead large institutions like Sloan Kettering Cancer Center or the National Cancer Institute I think are, are multiple. First, extremely profound understanding of the cancer problem, not only at a basic scientific level but at a clinical level as well. The second is one of sort of convincing your colleagues uh, to pursue a vision. The leader of these institutions needs to have the respect and confidence of the community. Um, and so someone as senior and accomplished as Dr. Varmus is one of the few people who I think can lead us that way. Um, I actually don't care whether people 100 years from now remember me at all. I'm more interested in what people I'm living with think about whether I'm doing the right thing in my scientific career or um, in leading the institutions I've led and bringing people together and making use of the money the public's made available to us to, to uh, use science to both understand the, the basis of life and to use the principles that we discover to improve human health.